Hey everyone, this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to do document classification in Weka. So sometimes you have data that is in text form and you want to use that text which corresponds to a certain class and be able to classify it. Here's some data that I have. These are Donald Trump's tweets and you can see at the end of each line it says either iPhone or if we eventually uh, dig through the data enough, some of them come from Android devices. It's known and in fact the White House has said that Trump himself posts from an Android device and his staff tends to post from iPhones. And it's not a perfect correlation, uh, but generally you can tell a difference as a just human being reading the text that there's very different tones coming from the iPhone versus the Android. Uh, so essentially we can use that device as a proxy for authorship. Did Trump write the tweet himself, which we would see if it came from the Android? I think more of those are up here. Or did the staff write the tweet? And we know that because it came from iPhone. So we have the text of the tweets and basically we want to give a bunch of examples of the Androids, a bunch of examples of the iPhones, and train a model to recognize the difference. This is already set up in an ARF format for Weka here, where we have the first attribute, which is the string, and then the second attribute, which is our class. So it's a really simple file. The issue is that Weka can't just take a string like this one, enjoy the Super Bowl and then we continue, make America great again. It can't just use that string to learn because if you think of that as a particular feature, you're not going to see that exact string again. And so when you get an unknown string, the fact that you had this one isn't going to help very much. The way that we handle that is by turning this text into what we call a word vector. So we're going to take all the words that are in this file here, every word that has ever been tweeted, and for each tweet we're going to not just have the string of words, we're going to say here's all the words that have ever existed, we'll put a zero next to the ones that don't appear in this tweet and a one next to the words that do appear in the tweet. This is called a word vector. So essentially for each tweet you know which words are in it as opposed to just having the words of the string. Then you can do classification and Weka's built-in document classification using word vectors tends to work really well. So what we need to be able to do is go into Weka, start with a file like the one that we just looked at, turn it into a word vector and then do classification. So we're going to start by just opening that file and I have it here as trump.arf and you can see that we have our two attributes, the tweet, which has the text, and then the class, which is Android or iPhone. Now, before I jump into the more complicated ways that you can do this, we make that word vector like I was talking about, there are options available to you to do classification when you have text just like this. If we click over to the Classify tab, uh, you can see what I've already picked here and tested out is this Naive Bayes multinomial text. Uh, this is an algorithm that's available if you have strings under the Bayes uh, options for classifiers and it can handle text just fine. Uh, it basically does some of the breakdown that we're talking about doing with word vectors and if you run it you can see that we're getting pretty good results just from this. 83% um, classified instances are ROC area under the curve 0.907 which is great. So this algorithm does pretty well. But that's not always going to work. It's not always going to do well on the data that you have. Uh, this also prevents you from using other attributes that you might want to throw in. So we're going to see how to do a word vector. So once we have our file open that has the text in a string in the class, we're going to use a filter up here. We're going to click on choose. And this filter is under unsupervised attributes. And if we scroll down, we find it as string to word vector there on the list. I tend to just leave it with all the default settings and then we're going to click apply and this is going to run and when it's done now you can see that we have a list here in our attribute window of every word that has appeared in these tweets. Okay, our class which is Android or iPhone is now the very first thing on the list but for us to be able to do classification on that it's helpful to have it at the end of the list. There are ways to work around it but it's easier if that's just the last attribute. So in order to fix that we're going to click on the edit button up here at the top 
And this often will take a really long time to pop up. So don't worry if it seems like it's taking forever. It's just really slow to bring that up. And what we see here are all of our uh, attributes and values. So we have each word up here at the top, all the values for each instance underneath. And here's our class at the very beginning where you can see we have Android. And if we were to go down further, we'd see iPhone. This is the thing that we want to be classifying against. And so you can right click this, or if you're on the Mac, you have to do option click, which is different than how you normally right click. And that pulls up this little menu and we can do attribute as class. This will think for a little while, but it has now moved to the end. You can't see it because we have a big list here, but it's not at the beginning anymore. Once you've done that, click OK. And now you can see we're seeing the breakdown here for this particular word. Uh, for We have a bar graph here that shows each of the classes. And uh, we can see here, you can do a little visualization for each one. Now we can run a lot of other classifiers on this. So if we come over to the classify tab and choose a classifier, before this Bayes multinomial text was the only one we had available. Now we could use, say, a naive Bayes algorithm uh, and run that. In fact, all the other algorithms that we're used to are available here. Um, so it's going to build a model. There's a ton of attributes. And uh, that's going to run, and eventually it's going to give us results. While it's running, let me just show you what this looks like, because I have it saved here. OK, so if we scroll up to the top, what we can see is we have a list of attributes, which are all of these words that appeared in the document. Um, they all show up as numeric, because you get either a 1 or a 0. And then if we finally scroll down past that list to our instances, these look a little bit weird. But what we're doing is giving a number of the attribute and then a 1 to indicate that it's present. We have these in curly braces, which indicates that we have a set. So essentially, this is uh, the word or the attribute that appears in a one indicating it. That spares us from having to do a lot of zeros, because most tweets don't have most words. You don't ever have to construct this file by yourself, because you can use that string to word vector. Um, but that's what this looks like. So if we flip back over to Weka. We can see our naive base classifier has finished running. And we've got some pretty decent results. Um, not quite as good as what we got with our text classifier, but 80% here, area under the curve of 0.881, which is really excellent. And we could augment this with other data. So we have this information about the words that are in each tweet. Uh, but we could also now add in attributes for like what time of day it was posted, um, or uh, what day of the week it was posted, which may be also indicative of authorship. Those could just go into this file that we were just looking at. Um, we keep exactly what Weka generated, add in our other attributes, include those into the data, and we're set. So there you go. That is a couple ways to do document classification in Weka, either using this built-in naive Bayes multinomial text or by creating a word vector.